Hello, welcome to Unit 1 in our Machine Language course. I'm um, just going to go over the basic introduction of machine learning and point you to a couple resources uh, in this short introductory video. Um, so I'm in Blackboard and in Unit 1 here. And I'm going to, uh, we're going to focus on these th first three resources here uh, below my overview video, and we're going to talk about those. Um, machine learning is a an exciting new field. It's uh, grown a lot in the last um, 10 years. We've seen lots of improvements, lots of cool things going on. So we're going to try to uh, check up on a little, a couple things with machine learning, get an overview of it. So a good place to start is from this uh, YouTube video by Google's AI Adventures uh, course. Uh, Yu Feng Goes uh, records it. It's just a short five-minute introduction. Uh, to this. It's part of a whole series and there's actually quite a few videos in this series that are actually quite good uh, that we'll be looking at. So you can just, uh, I'm not going to play this all here. Of machine learning. Long but there's a whole playlist of um, other uh, options or other videos that he records and a couple others at uh, Google Cloud platforms um, and, and goes that. That's really uh, a pretty good thing. I'm trying not to be too biased. I was uh, actually down at Google's headquarters uh, last summer uh, getting some training in their uh, AI and machine learning tools. Um, but still, I think it's a great introduction. Um, the next is actually a text blog. Uh, so it gives you a little more chance to read this. And this is uh, in a, um, a blog site called Towards uh, Data Science uh, here. And so this is just an introduction to machine learning uh, here. So let's just go over this real quickly. Um, it, the author talks about uh, some basic uh, introductions. So Victor Roman is the author here. And talks about where he's gotten some of his uh, material uh, for that. Uh, and this is a fairly well-written uh, blog. I like this. So talks about this idea of introduces machine learning. There's a, a video here that talks about it and introduces some basic terminology here. And this is what we'll see a lot. A lot of um, our data will be stored similar to a spreadsheet. Uh, we'll have rows and columns. Uh, generally, each column will be a different attribute, and each row will be an example of uh, a data point or an ex um, area um, that we're going to be looking at, uh, an observation uh, kind of idea. Uh, often, there'll be one row here that might be a category or a label that we have to predict either predict a numeric value or a text value we have to predict uh, something. Um, so like we'll look at uh, measurements of cancer tumors here and then one of the labels will just be whether or not it's benign or malignant uh, for that. So we'll often work with data in this sort of grid or kind of like a spreadsheet like format. But often will be too big to actually bring in right to a spreadsheet so we'll be using other tools. Next, we're going to look at some of the different types of uh, learning. There's supervised and unsupervised learning. We'll be doing both of those. Now, deep learning is just an uh, advanced version, and you can do that for either supervised or unsupervised, so it's done more often for supervised. So this is just an extension often of supervised learning. So supervised learning is when we have a set of data a set of samples and we have the desired output or label it's already known and given to us for that and here's a general process we've uh, take this training data and the labels and we use a machine learning algorithm and we train and create a model from that model we can take some new data put it into our model and generate predictions for it so two types of ways of doing this one is called classification often and that's where we just want to classify things into some discrete classifications like i say maybe benign or malignant tumors um, or can you identify this as is this a car a person a cat a dog what is this picture of um, and again so often we're working with um, lots of data points. This is just in two-dimensional uh, space where I have two features uh, here and we know we have a bunch of them labeled as one example and another example and we have some new data point. Our job is then to figure out this new data point. Is it uh, more of, is it like this label or like this label uh, for that? Now regression is similar to this but um, here we look at a trend and we're often working with numeric values rather than just uh, categories and it's usually continuous uh, meaning that 
it's numeric and it can be any number on race. So maybe we're looking at uh, the number of bedrooms in a house compared to the, the price of the house. Uh, here and then as this goes up the price will also change and we can do this prediction and again generally here we're going to give given some uh, initial value can you make a prediction of what uh, this other value is uh, it's called regression it is I mean maybe extrapolation is a better thing it's just historically called regression which is kind of a strange term but that's what it means it's just a kind of a numeric extrapolation from the given data here now unsupervised learning is uh, similar to this, but when we don't have the labels, we don't or we don't know what the results are. Um, so, like we might have a, a bunch of measurements of plants, and we want to see how the plants are clustered together, all or microbes are clustered together, or items. So, again, we'll look at and we'll try to create our own clusters. So there, we we just don't know. Here we've drawn out possible clusters, but there might be other clusters here, or this might not be. But the this is one way. So we try to cluster the data without uh, and put them in categories without knowing ahead of time what those categories are. Uh, and so that's called unsupervised learning because we don't have a supervisor telling us what the categories are uh, initially. Now related to this is something called dimensional reduction. Often we're, we're looking at lots of features. We might have 20 or 100 features on each sample and we'll want to reduce that. So like here's uh, three dimensional features, three points in three dimensions, and we were going to reduce that to two dimensions. Um, but still maintain some of the good characteristics, the important characteristics of this. And so there's some ways we can do this where we can take higher dimensional data, like we can take 100 attributes and uh, bring them down to maybe just um, 10 attributes that are meaningful for this. So the last thing uh, we're going to talk about, and this is what we'll do a lot of, is deep learning. Uh, deep learning is a way of setting up a neural network, and we'll learn what these kind of structures are with lots of layers in it and setting up. And there's been lots of advan uh, advances in using different structures for neural networks and stuff like that. So we'll look at a lot of this. Now, reinforcement learning is one of those things we're not going to do too much on. It's an area here but we won't just have that much time to go into that uh, idea. Um, so to wrap up here, let's just look at the general methodology for building machine learning models. Uh, and again, this is kind of uh, often how we use it for um, supervised learning, which will be most of our time here. Um, so we're given some bunch of raw data and some labels, and we break that up into a set of training and a set of test uh, sets. And then we feed this into a learning algorithm, and we look at all the training uh, data and run it through our learning algorithm uh, to learn uh, from that some predictions. And then that creates a model for us uh, to predict from. Then we take our test data and we feed it into the model and see what labels it generates. Um, now we know if those labels are good or bad, and so we can measure how effective this model is. And then we can do some more training on this. Um, and so this, uh, we do a repeated cycle where we train uh, the learning algorithm with the training data and keep trying to improve it till it turns. Finally, uh, we can have some, uh, our, our final model and we can give it some new data and we can generate labels from that. So. So we'll spend some time talking about how we will manage the data and work with that, how we'll train it and set it up and select some stuff. Now one warning is there's a lot of math in uh, machine learning, um, but we, and a lot of statistics, um, but you can actually nowadays with modern day tools do a lot of this and understand the concepts without this math. So uh, although there will be math around uh, here and if you're a math, uh, have a mathematical background, uh, I can point you to a lot of sources for that. Um, you can certainly succeed and do a lot in machine learning with that. And we'll use what we call just-in-time math learning. So if there's a mathematical uh, idea that we need, uh, we'll introduce it to you inside this class as we're going along. And again, we'll try to minimize the amount of math. So uh, equations like this, we won't have to worry about. Okay, hope you enjoy the course. Now, the next step is to look at this introduction to Jupyter Notebooks. Now, in the course, every um, week, we'll have a practice activity. So this is our next practice activity, and that practice activity will walk you through these three sources and have you answer some questions about them.
including generating some of the code from that. So I'm going to leave this last part, Jupyter Notebook stuff, down to this practice uh, uh, video down here. Now there's lots of machine learning resources, um, and so this is just a pointer to some that we'll be uh, using throughout the course. Um, and again, if you're really interested in machine learning and want to start learning some other things or after the course is done, feel free to come back here and look at some of these or talk to me about them. But there's lots of good resources. Unfortunately, a lot of these require different things that you might not have, uh, languages you may not know, um, math backgrounds you may not have. So what I've tried to do is uh, scale these all into a course and present uh, the important concepts of machine learning here that you can um, pick up uh, and including the limited amount of programming and math concepts that you'll need for machine learning. So, uh, next, you should go on to the practice activity here.